Good evening, everybody. Welcome to St. Jude Church, Malad East in the city of Mumbai. Today is Monday, the 24th of July, 2020, and we are in the 21st week of ordinary time. I want to welcome you to this Eucharistic celebration. Today, our Mass is offered for the intentions of, uh, of Prendla Gonsalves, also uh, for the intentions of Orlando Mascarenas, for Elma Mascarenas, who also has a petition for her daughter, and also for Melissa, that she may have a proper diagnosis. We also pray in thanksgiving today for Nancy, Ryan, and Rowena, and for the gift of a baby girl. We pray also today for the health and well-being of Elena and Aldrin Gonsalves, for the health of Shamika, and also for the health of Ajay Furtado. We continue to pray for Candice as she prepares herself for a second round of chemotherapy. Our prayers also for the health and well-being of Baldwin and his wife, for Everest D'Souza who is in the ICU, for Eddie and Millie. Also prayers for Bernard Fernandez, who is struggling with Parkinson's. Prayers for the health and well-being of Rene Millet, and also Carol Rigby, who is suffering from cancer. Prayers for the health and well-being of Augustine de Costa. Today, we have a number of birthdays. We thank God for the gift of life for all these who celebrate their birthdays today especially those who we now pray for and remember before the Lord. For Jess Cardoz, it being the eighth birthday, for Ainsley DeMello on his 50th birthday, for Edward D'Souza on his 75th birthday, for Alban Pal, for Hilda Nazareth on her 68th birthday, for Ida Smith on her 87th birthday, for Philomena D'Souza on her 75th birthday, for Vivian Cabral, also prayers for Father Anthony Fernandez from our seminary who celebrates his birthday today. We also pray for the twins from our parish, Austin and Kevin Disa. We pray also for Anila D'Souza from Toronto who celebrates her birthday today. I want to pray in a special way for my own brother-in-law, Craig Fernandez, also for Flori Fernandez, prayers for Honorato Gregory from our parish, from the community of Holy Family. Prayers also for Richard from St. Joseph's community who celebrates his birthday today. Prayers for Father Dominic Adams, also for Kyle D'Souza, for Father Joel Pinto from IC Church Purivli, who celebrates his birthday today. For Father Barthol Machado. Also prayers for Jesse James, celebrating his birthday today, along with Anthea Miranda on her 18th birthday. Also Trisha from our parish from the community of St. Joseph. For Philomena Criado. Prayers also for Zane D'Souza on his 8th birthday and Charmaine Hendricks on her 50th birthday. For Alan Swamy, for Anastasia and Casper Rodericks. They're both their twins celebrating their 30th birthday today. For Peter Dias on his 71st birthday. For Avelino Fernandez. For Marian Anthony. For Hazel Menin. For Philomena Fernandez and for Joel Pires. Today we pray for all the souls in purgatory. We remember those who have passed away due to the virus. Our prayers today also are for Jose Fernandez on his third death anniversary, 
fully on the Sousa, today being the month's mind. Also prayers for the soul of Cherry Martins, for the soul of Carlos de Sousa, for the soul of souls of Gilbert and Doris Kinney, for the soul of Father Roland Fialo, the soul of Augustine Fialo, for the soul of Janarius de Sousa, for the soul of Joseph Braganza, for the soul of Gracie Nazareth, the soul of Peter Cardoz, for the soul of Lancy de Sousa, it being the first death anniversary, for the soul of Dorothy de Sousa, for the soul of T.P. Chaco, for the soul of Mervyn Fernandez, it being the second death anniversary, for the soul of Celine Fernandez, for the soul of Christopher Clark, for the soul of Alice Mary, for the soul of Victor de Sousa, for the soul of João Fernandez, for the soul of John de Cuna, for the soul of Daisy Snugs, for the soul of Bruce de Pena, for the soul of Mary Pereira, for the soul of Frederick Nerona, for the soul of Bertha Ribeiro, for the soul of Francis de Sousa, for the soul of Piedad Fernandez, for the soul of Bertha de Sousa, for the soul of Francis Pereira, for the soul of Mary de Sousa, for the soul of Jennifer Castellino and being the second death anniversary, for the soul of Florine Lobo, for the soul of Beryl and Victor Sequera, for the soul of Lucy Pinto, for the soul of Wilfred de Sousa, for the soul of Gregory Gomes, for the soul of Rovina Arez, for the soul of Dulcine de Sousa, for the soul of Dominic Fernandez, it being the second death anniversary, for the soul of Norbert Lobo, who passed away today, also for the soul of Ruth Piedad, who passed away today, and is the mother-in-law of our chartered accountant, Gavin de Sousa. We remember him and his wife, Joy, in our prayers, and also the, for the soul of Anthony Lobo. Please prepare yourselves to celebrate this Eucharist. I, today is the feast of Saint Bartholomew the Apostle. We will be singing the Gloria as part of our liturgy. Please find the hymns that were sent to you earlier this afternoon via WhatsApp. I had earlier sent a message to those on Facebook that we did not have the internet some time ago. The internet has now been restored for those who'd like to view this mass both from Facebook, for, would like to view this mass on Facebook, may do so. We'll be broadcasting live via Facebook and YouTube.
Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters, and will you please wish one another. On the feast of St. Bartholomew the Apostle, let us sign ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our feelings. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We give glory to God as we sing. Strengthen in us, O Lord, the faith by which the blessed Apostle Bartholomew clung wholeheartedly to your Son, and grant that through the help of his prayers, your Church may become for all the nations the sacrament of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Apoc Apocalypse. The angel came to speak to me and said, Come here and I will show you the bride that the Lamb has married. In the spirit, he took me to the top of an enormous high mountain and showed me Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down from God out of heaven. It had all the radiant glory of God and glittered like some precious jewel of crystal clear diamond. The walls of it were of a great height and had 12 gates. At each of the 12 gates there was an angel, and over the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. On the east there were three gates, 
on the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. The city walls stood on 12 foundation stones, each one of which bore the name of the one of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word will be, your, fri your friends, O Lord, make known the glorious splendor of your reign. Your friends, friends O Lord, Lord, make known the, the glorious splendor of, of your reign. All your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God. Your response? Your friends, friends O Lord, Lord make known the glorious splendor of your reign. They make known to me your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your reign. Yours is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule lasts from age to age. Your response? Your friends, O Lord, Lord make known the glorious, the glorious splendor of your reign. The Lord is just in all his ways and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. Your response? Your friends, O Lord, Lord, make known the, the glorious, glorious splendor of your reign. Kindly stand for the gospel. Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, the one about whom the prophets wrote. He is Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. From Nazareth, said Nathanael, can any good come from that place? Come and see, replied Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming, he said of him, here is an Israel, Israelite who deserves the name incapable of deceit. How do you know me, said Nathaniel. Before Philip came to call you, said Jesus, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathaniel answered, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus replied, you believe that just because I said I saw you under a fig tree? You will see greater things than that. And then he added, I tell you most solemnly, you will see heaven laid open and above the Son of Man, the angels of God ascending and descending. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May I recommend that you open your Bibles. Today we are in the Gospel of John and we are looking at chapter 1, verses 45 to 51 in the text, but I'm going to look at the larger text. So John chapter 1. So uh, to understand really this text, you need to look at it a little more because the text of today really focuses on Nathaniel, who's also, by the way, 
it was the other name for Bartholomew. So don't get confused and wonder whose feast we are celebrating. Nathaniel and Bartholomew are the same persons. So uh, what is the Gospel of John really doing? It's telling us how, in a way, Jesus first assembled his disciples. And I'd like to go through that process because if you look at this entire text, you will see that the fifth person to be chosen um, into Jesus' band of 12 was Bartholomew. What you heard was the last section uh, of uh, Bartholomew now being introduced to Jesus. So I want to look at this larger text because Bartholomew and the 12 were ardent disciples, not disciples, they were apostles of Jesus. Yes, they were disciples, and then Jesus calls them to be apostles. And uh, we need to understand, therefore, what was really, what was Jesus really calling his disciples to? What was the call of each disciple? What was the real purpose? And so I want to look at the larger text in order to take you to uh, where we are. So if you look at the Gospel of John, you will realize that Jesus began his ministry really with borrowed disciples. They were not his, the first two that were um, called, or rather who followed Jesus, were not his. They were the followers of John the Baptist. But it was John the Baptist who pointed out to Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God. And we know this prompted two unnamed disciples. Very interestingly, the Gospel of John doesn't tell us the two disciples. It reveals one name and leaves the other one uh, in literally in limbo. But these two unnamed disciples begin to follow Jesus. And they must have been stalking Jesus for quite a while because Jesus at one point of time realizes these two chaps are behind him. He turns around and he says to them, excuse me, he says, but what are you looking for? And that's the first reflection I would like to take with you. What are you looking for? What are we looking for? Simply following Jesus doesn't make much sense. We need to figure out what is it that we are seeking. Why are we following the Lord? What are we looking for? Now, Jesus was most certainly looking for disciples, not followers. I know you'll say, but Jesus says, if you wish to be my disciple, take up my cross and follow me. Follow me to what? Follow me to the cross, to discipleship. And the reason why I say Jesus was looking for disciples and not followers, especially we saw this in the Gospel of Matthew, is because followers are fickle. You know, uh, I'm always amused by the number of followers I have on Facebook, or you have them on Instagram, or you have them on Twitter. Today, everybody's following everybody, but nobody's a disciple of anyone. You get what I'm saying? Everyone can be following. I can be following a million people. We are not followers of Jesus. We are disciples, which means that we are single-minded. We are one Lord, one Master, and we are not going to be listening to everybody else's gyan. We just listen to the words of Jesus, and we draw our inspiration from them. So we have to also answer this question that Jesus set before his um, apostles. What are you looking for? Because the answer we give makes all the difference. Now, the answer of these two unnamed disciples was not some plea to be lodged for the night. Yeah, they were not saying, well, we don't have a place to stay. Jesus, can we stay with you? Incidentally, Jesus never had any address. So they were not asking for his address when they asked him, where do you live? They wanted to permanently stay with Jesus. There was something that connected. And they wanted to be with him always. They chose at that moment to stop following others and maybe even following John the Baptist and be a disciple. They had clarity now. John had pointed them in the right direction. Which brings me to the second reflection today on discipleship. And that discipleship is not some one night fleeting romance with Jesus. You know, I find that very often we fall into this, um, I, I think I've used this expression before, into this understanding of Jesus, our relationship with him being very, you know, sentimental, romantic, and very namby-pamby, you know, like, ah, everything goes, ah, nice, sweet out of Jesus. Jesus is calling us to very tough love. He's not calling us, <coughs> 
discipleship is tough. You know, in these last few days, or rather in these last few months, I have been receiving uh, WhatsApp messages from so many people. And uh, today I read another one, said husband has lost their job in Dubai. It's really tough. But you know what she said? She said, yeah, she said, Father, my faith, our faith was faltering. And then yesterday she said, on Sunday you spoke about, you know, who do you say I am? And she said, we felt strengthened by our faith. If you're going to love Jesus, only when everything is nice, then we are sentimental. And you know, I want to really salute many of you. I, I want to bless many of you. I want to convey to you, on behalf of the church, how proud we are of you. When we see your faith. Because I find so often your faith strengthens my faith. So Jesus is not calling us to some namby-pamby relationship with him. He's calling us to very tough love. That is what discipleship is, not some fleeting romance. When everything is fine, Lord, we say hallelujah, and then when it's tough, you know, we, we run away. Now, the third takeaway from today's gospel on discipleship is also very interesting. You know, I, as a seminarian, often assume that God first calls us, and then we spend nine years of discernment. If you look at our text today, it's just the opposite. The discernment began first. In fact, they are debating with Jesus. Where do you live? Where do you come? Where do you, what do you do? There's this process of discernment. They were already observing Jesus. John points them and says, that's the way. Go to that seminary, not to my seminary. This discernment was going on. And then finally, when Jesus said to them, come and see, that was the call. They answer the call. You see, the, the whole process is just the opposite. We often think that it is first a call, and then I discern. No, it can also be that you're discerning and then boom, Jesus says, that's the moment I want you. This is the time I want you. And you feel the call so strongly. So there are many people who feel, you know, I will discern later. Let Jesus call me. No, discern now. I want to say to many young people who are watching, and I hope young people are watching this, I always try to keep our homilies here uh, vibrant so that many young people feel enthused about Jesus. I want you to know that God is calling you. He is to discipleship. Maybe not to necessarily serve him in the priesthood, but he is calling you to discipleship, to be a witness among the whole world, among your friends, that Christians are people, that disciples of Jesus are also fun-loving. Yeah, that's why I always tell Christians, please smile, please smile. People must look at you constantly and say, what's with this guy that he always has the ability to smile? Yeah? I find, um, I, I, I think I shared this with you, on a Sunday morning, I think my, very, it's very hard, I want to tell you, coming to the altar some days, and some of you have said, Are Father, today you were smiling a little extra, what happened? I said, I'm always happy on some days, I'm super happy, yeah? You know, they assume that when you smile on some days a little more, that day you are happy. I want to correct you. I am happy. And when I smile more, I'm super happy. But, is it easy for me to come to the altar and smile? The answer is no. There are some days I want to bury my head somewhere and say, that's it, I'm done. I can't go before that camera. I cannot do it. But each time I say that, I say, what would Jesus want me to do? And I always think, there is somebody there behind that camera watching somewhere who needs me today to say what Jesus wants to say to them. And you'll believe it or not, as soon as the mass is over, and I'm sure today one of you will do it, will send me a message saying, that homily was for me. But does, is it easy for me to smile here? No. In the same way, when you come to church, please smile. Yeah, I was telling a few friends the other day, I said, good God, looking at your faces at mass, I want to run away. Because it's terrible. It's just terrible looking at everybody. You come sometimes to a congregation, I'm looking at benches, by the way. Uh, Brother Paolo is smiling at me, that's very encouraging. But sometimes you come to Mass and you're looking at people and you want to run away. So, you know, you, I'm asking young people, be witnesses to Jesus. Discern right now. Smile. Be happy so that people looking at you may also say, I want to be a follower of Jesus. Also, my dear sisters and brothers, discipleship is a matter of conviction. It's a deep inner conviction. These two unnamed disciples of Jesus accepted the invitation of Jesus 
they willingly submitted to be with him in his seminary. And what kind of seminary did Jesus have? He had nothing. He didn't have a structure. He didn't have a building. But you know, they were happy to be with him because we see in verse 39, they, they, they came, they saw, in verse 39, they saw him, and they were conquered. And scripture tells us something very interesting. They remained with him that day. Just let that line sink into you for a second. They remained with him that day. They must have been super excited. This day was imprinted on their mind so deeply that we spent that first day with Jesus. They were so happy. It was a matter of conviction. Now, nobody had to convince them anymore. You know, let me extend this very often to some of us sometimes who feel, oh, do I have to go to church? You know, when you ask that question, it's not a matter of conviction. It's a matter of obligation. And I know we've always said Sunday Mass is obligation, Sunday Mass is obligation. But I, I wish you to say to yourself, Sunday Mass is my conviction. I want to remember that day when I spent, or that Sunday when I stayed with Jesus. I spent the whole Sunday with him. Yeah, remember that Sunday is not our day, it's the Lord's day. It is the Lord's day. If it's the Lord's day, it's his day. It belongs to him. We spend that day with him. So they stayed with him. And in less than 24 hours, scripture tells us they said, yes, Lord, we want to be with you. Because he made such a deep impact on their lives that day when they remained with him. And interestingly, I think Jesus' sales pitch was a very hard act to follow. Most sales, uh, salespeople will first give you many words, and then they'll give you a, perhaps an action. Look at Jesus. Jesus was a man of action. His words came later. He didn't have to convince people. Uh, I, I don't know whether I've said it, sometimes I tend to repeat myself, but uh, one of the things that deeply struck me in the seminary was the words of Bishop Percival Fernandez when one day he was talking to us, I forget the occasion, but he said to us, he said, you know, brothers, 50% of your homily is over even before you say a single word. And I was wondering, where is this going? And he said, he repeated it, he said, 50% of your homily is over even before you say a single word because people look at you they look at your life. They see whether you're a man of action, a man of God, and they believe everything else that you say. But if the first part has not really sold, because they don't see you as a lover of Jesus, they don't see you rooted in his word, they don't see you as a man for the people and a man who lives the values of Jesus Christ, then no matter what you say after that, said Bishop Percy to us, is absolutely useless. The disciples today were convinced it is at this stage that the gospel now tells us the name of, the, of one of the unnamed disciples. And we know now he's Andrew. And Andrew has been drawn now into the, into the fold. And he, look at Andrew. He is so convinced. Remember, he spent those first 24 hours with the Lord that he goes running to his brother and says, we have found the Messiah, which gives us the third apostle. We now know that Jesus' seminary from two moved to three. Jesus calls him Cephas. And as I said, this itinerant seminary, no structure, no building, no nothing, now does a huge movement. If you look at your text, Jesus moves from the south, from Judea, to the north, to Galilee. It is now here where he, in Galilee that he's going to make his headquarters. And when he arrives in Galilee, he meets the fourth one. And who is that? It's Philip. So Philip is the fourth apostle. And here is, which brings me to my last reflection. What kind of a person is Philip? And this is before I go to Bartholomew or Nathaniel. Because it is Philip who goes to Bartholomew and says, we have found the master. Okay? So we need to understand a little bit about Philip. What kind of a disciple is Philip? I think Philip is an amazing guy. Because he could evangelize and take criticism and continue to evangelize. Why do I say this? Remember, our friend Philip goes to Bartholomew and says, hey, Bartholomew, Nathaniel, guess what? We have found the master. And what does our apostle of today, whose feast we celebrate, I call him the cynical one, he must have sneered. <laughs> he sneered and said, really? From Nazareth? What good can come from Nazareth? You're telling me the Messiah has come from Nazareth? But did Philip give, give up? The answer is no. I think we also need to have a little of Philip in us. 
that when we evangelize, my dear brothers and sisters, people will sneer, they'll snigger. You know, I became acutely conscious at one stage in my life that when I spoke to non-Christians, I would always say, God, God, God. I said, God did this and God did that. One day I felt very convicted. I said, am I ashamed to say Jesus? Why am I using a more generic term? And now when I talk to non-Christians, I say, Yeshu Masiya ni, Masiya hai. He is my Messiah. So Philip was not bothered whether Nathaniel would sneer at him, make fun of him. We are bothered, yeah? I, 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 I am a little concerned sometimes when I find congregations, and I'm concerned, you know, unwilling in church to respond, to clap hands, to praise God, to put their hands up. You know, think about it, and I'm not passing a judgment. But very often at a party where we don't know 40 people, we will dance like <laughs> as if we have gone completely nuts, crazy, throw our hands, you know, do all kinds of the jig in front of 40 complete strangers at a party. Or we will start singing very loudly, sometimes maybe after a drink at a party, but then we'll take out the guitar and everybody. What happens when we have to do the same with God? All our hand movements like this in front of 40 people, and sometimes I even say, uh, you know, thank God we don't have some religious processions where we dance on the road, but what happens to us in church? Our hands from all this at a party go to like this. Literally like this. I refuse to even do this. So something is wrong with the way we are approaching God, with the way we are approaching religion. Yeah? Um, the church never prohibits us from... Uh, Clapping. Somebody once told me, Ari, Father, you all clap so much in your church. I said, the Psalms said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Yeah? Sometimes it's so ironic that we are singing, clap your hands and sing Alleluia. We do it. Many of the churches, we sing this as the acclamation. Clap your hands and sing Alleluia. Nobody's clapping their hands. But they're all saying, clap your hands. And how ironic is the presentation of our faith, really? So, don't be ashamed. Philip could take cynicism. He goes to the saint of today, our Nathaniel, which brings us to Bartholomew, and with this I'm going to end. So Bartholomew believed that in Jesus because Jesus revealed his past. He said, Jesus said, oh, what good can come from Nazareth? Well, Bartholomew, I saw you under a fig tree. Somebody asked me, Father, why a fig tree? I said, just go to Palestine, there are only fig trees. <laughs> yeah, there are olive trees and fig trees. It was the most obvious tree. I think even if Jesus took a guess, he would have said, you were under a fig tree. But anyway, B Bartholomew believes because Jesus says, I saw you under a fig tree. And he falls for Jesus. And Jesus says, look, I don't want you to believe me because I could tell you your past. And the same goes for all of us. We don't believe in Jesus because he tells us our past or our future. We believe in Jesus because we experience him in the present. Right here, right now, we know he's our savior. No compromise on that. And look how Bartholomew died. I mean, there's some belief that he came to India. He didn't. Trust me, I'm a hist I teach history in the seminary. He never came to India as much as we'd like to believe. But certainly in Armenia, yes. In fact, he's a patron. Armenia, by the way, is the first, was the first country that was entirely Catholic. Armenia was the first entirely Catholic country. And the king of that place, Astagris, put Bartholomew to death. Why? Because they wanted him to worship their gods, and he struck down their idol, breaking it. And so the king decided to first strip him off his skin. They flayed him. They removed off his entire skin, and then um, hung him upside down and crucified him. And these were our apostles, people who began by sniggering and sneering at our Lord, and then the ones who gave their life for him. Let that settle in, my dear brothers and sisters. Let this whole process of discipleship settle in, so that you completely understand that we stand today in the line of people, yes, who were weak, with failings and falterings, but look at them. Look at the end process because they chose with conviction to cling on to that day when they remembered how Jesus touched and transformed their life and they were never the same again, willing to give their life for Jesus.
happy feast, everybody, and cherish this wonderful apostle, Bartholomew. Please stand for the prayers of the faithful. As we honor the apostle who was a man incapable of deceit, let us come confidently to the Father, opening our hearts in prayer. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. All together. Lord, hear our prayer. For spiritual movements which enrich the faith of God's people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for honesty in government. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work in youth ministry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For trust and tolerance in our families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the candor and simplicity of childlike faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As these prayers come before you, gentle Father, with the help of Saint Bartholomew, teach us to care for others and to trust in your providence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. Sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept these sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we celebrate anew the feast day of St. Bartholomew, O Lord, we pray that we may obtain your help through the intercession of the Apostle, in whose honor we bring you the sacrifice of praise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Oswald, our Bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. With joy and love in your heart, please share this peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins sin. of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you, that you should, should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you. I embrace you. As if you were already there. As if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere. Hear graciously the prayers we make for those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they may take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just uh, two quick announcements. Um, we have adoration tonight between 9.30 and 10, ending with benediction. Please do join us. And yesterday at Mass, I inadvertently said that Sunday Mass is at 9.30 uh, a.m. It's not at 9.30, it's at 9 o'clock. I don't know why I said that. I also made another mistake. I said the novenas will begin on Saturday. It will begin this coming Sunday. So I stand corrected. Please remember, Sunday Mass is at 9 and not at 9.30. We'll say the final prayer, followed by the blessing. As we celebrate the feast day of the blessed apostle Bartholomew, we have received the pledge of eternal salvation, O Lord. And we pray that it may be of help to us, both now and for the life to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the holy apostle Saint Bartholomew. Amen. Amen. And may he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. Amen. So that through the intercession of the apostles, you may inherit the eternal homeland, for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Let us glorify Jesus by the lives we live. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Have a lovely evening, everyone.